Hello everyone, in this video I want to talk about something that's uh, rather not addressed as it should, as it's supposed to be addressed, as much as it's supposed to be addressed. It's about thread twists. I've talked about this in a video that they made about uh, using the UTC thread more and control the thread, but I want to address this a little bit more and a little bit more in depth. Uh, I got an inspiration from Mr. Wayne from uh, Global Fly Fisher site. He has some videos over there and you should check it out because they're amazing. And he, he has that ability to teach anyone at any level of time. So without any further ado, let's talk about those twists in our thread and twists between thread and any other material that you want to cord around your thread or you don't want to cord around your thread. So let me explain what happens when you thread uh, when you twists when you twist something uh, counterclockwise or clockwise. So let's see what happens. So let's see first those two threads. As you can see, they lay parallel to each other, and imagine that this is your tying thread. For example, floss or UTC thread. That's again like a floss. So when you take your bobbin and you start winding your thread around the hook shank and with each turn you introduce one twist into your thread and you can see that into my right hand that this thread uh, is not uh, parallel anymore it's uh, twisted now so the more you wind the more twists you introduce into this thread and the more corded everything becomes as opposed to flat at the beginning of the tying that's why some tires would actually counter spin their bobbins, which means looking from above, it's counter spun, uh, it's anti clockwise to remove those twists so they, their thread can lay flat again. Or if you want it for some reason, you can introduce clockwise motion, cord the thread, and get this corded effect. Now, how this uh, can help you with your tying. Now let's imagine one scenario and this is let's take that this orange thread is a tying thread and that the green thread here is actually a pico curl or marabou or any strand of material that you're going to make a body with or well anything basically. So if you start your tying and you clockwise do a clockwise turn between two materials and you start tying around the hook shank you will actually introduce more twists and as you wind up those materials along the shank they will twist even more around each other and thus they will reinforce each other oh, well thread will go around them but if you for some reason do a counter twist like this then as you wind up everything will lay flat so those materials will not cord around each other and thus they will not reinforce each other of course after some time if you don't introduce those counter twists materials will, will as you can see cord up on each other and thus they will reinforce each other so uh, bear in mind uh, about this because in the next sequence or video I will do this in a real life situation. Now let's get into tying of the first of the flies I'm gonna tie tonight in this video and uh, at the same time applying the rule that I've just explained about twisting your thread anti-clockwise, clockwise or whatever you need to do in a certain moment. So in this particular case I'm going to tie some wet fly and I'm gonna lay foundation of the thread along the hook shank and foundation of thread is very important because it will allow you to have more friction between thread and your fly and your material sorry as opposed to having a bare hook and uh, material so thread material bare hook has less friction than just uh, thread material thread so I, th I hope this this makes a little bit sense so just gonna lay foundation I know I don't do this uh, always this thing about thread layer but in this case let me just do this because I'm having 
a very thin thread I can allow myself to go back and forth and I, I know I won't create any bulk if you use any thicker thread you should think in advance how you are going to wrap your thread so I'm gonna use two peacock curls what I like to do, I like to grab those tips and I grab peacock like this and it breaks at a certain point, you can do it twice maybe and that's it. Now I'm going to take and tie in those curls. I'll just go a little bit with this thread here. Now I'll go back with the thread. Now notice the shape of the curl is already tapered so this way I don't need to taper anything below the hurl. So let's do this. I like to twist to, to spin my vise. But what I'm going to do is now I'm going to spin materials clockwise. So looking from above it's going to be spun clockwise and this will actually reinforce itself a little bit more as I explained already in the video. So I'll hold both thread and the peacock at the same with the same hand I'll just go s slowly in touching turns after each rep what I like to do is I like to add a little bit of stroking back to help these small barbules or, or whatever it is it's called to lean back there is definitely a better way to do this, which I still don't know. And Mr. Wayne, which I mentioned, who I mentioned previously, he or, he explained to me, but I need some time to learn all of this. So he also told me not to uh, not to treat this uh, curl in any way, but it's something that I just used to do. I'll do well. I won't do it because I have already done enough so now I have to untwist everything and with one two turns or the curl as you can see and let's do two turns in front of the curl those two turns in front are called locking turns and they hold everything in place now as you can see I have thread foundation here I'll go back a little bit now I will use bamboo partridge which is maybe even better than a normal partridge because it has a thinner stem and I'll just remove all this fluff and you can see how thin the stem is it's like super thin now also I'm not removing the symmetrical those barbules because I want to help it myself with this to start it from the beginning the right way so when I start it like this and go this way it's gonna uh, lay on the hook with the bare stem first if you choose if you will you can just remove all those barbules from this side and just tie in the, the, the feather it's also a good way I don't know why I like to overdress my wet flies uh, I know it's a mistake, so for you, for those of you who don't like it, you can al also do the preferred way. But what I wanted to show you is the part with the pico curl. Now I do a couple of turns, and then I'll go with my thread through the feather, and I'll go over the stem like this. And now I'll just do one and two locking turns over the partridge feather and one, two in front of it. Now I'll push my scissors and cut the feather. I need to do a whip finish knot. Now this is the second thing I learned from, from uh, Mr. Wayne and it's the direction of the knot. So. What he said to me is that I should form a little bit of head with my thread like so and then I should do the knot 
from the back side to the front because it's going to be more durable. So that's what I'm doing right now. And I'll do two finish knots, wood finish knots as always. It's my habit and I don't think it's going to create anything wrong with this. Now because this thread is yellow I don't like the color obviously for this fly. I'll just press Sharpie against the head and I'll go and color it. I'm gonna color it in black. That's it. Now, so I reinforced the fly twice. I re reinforced the body, I reinforced the, the legs. Now let's see how we can apply this into like completely different material. I'll use the same hook because, believe it or not, uh, I do fish those damsels in small sizes and I do fish them uh, as sparse as this, so without any details. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start everything the same way I did with a pico curl. So just cover it with thread. So this is more or less lazy fly for me. When I want to go fishing and I just don't have time to tie any flies, I just do this. So I'll use those barbules. They're quite long, so I have enough to work with. I'll just take away maybe one cm of, of them, like so. I'm gonna wet my fingers and I'm gonna make them a little bit more obedient. So as you can see, everything is a little bit more obedient right now. What I'd like to do is like two or three times even length of the hook shank. So as you can see, it's like two and a half, maybe three. So here, okay, I'm gonna one, two, and then I'll just cover a little bit of shank and go back. Now again, with clockwise motion. So go clockwise, looking from above with your marabou. You can stroke back those fibers so you can uh, pull out those small fluffy parts and then just go hold everything together so it will cord around itself print those fibers back so you're going to get nice fluffy body so it's nice getting a little bit tricky because it's short Okay, now I can finish it off with my rotation. I'm trying to release some of these, some of these barbules or again, whatever it's called. Now one, two in front, three, okay, that's it. So as you can see, it's a very fast tie. And let's talk about advantages of this fly. First, it has like loads of inbuilt movement. It has all the triggers one damselfly should have. Movement, color, silhouette. And that's it. Two web finish knots. Reinforced fly, the whole like the, the whole fly is all about movement. It's light. How I like to fish this fly is very simple. I use it in very skinny water, in let's say 10, 20 cm water, maybe 30. I cast it to the fish that I see that's cruising around me. So I just cast it so the fish can see it. I let it sink slowly, and if there's no reaction, I strip it. If there is reaction, if the fish is coming and then like thinking whether to eat it or not, I, I change the retrieve as I see the fish. It's very visual, it's very attractive fishing. So that's why I'm using dry fly hook 
and just like sparse everything is sparse here you can choose to add maybe monofilament eyes it's okay and this is it there is not no much to it it's it's perfect little little fly uh, it's it won't be so bulky in water because like when you retrieve it it's gonna the water will squeeze it when you stop it's gonna just pulsate it's going to be a little bit as you can see more fluffy uh, even the, the slightest of currents will move it as you can see it moves even here in a room so guys uh, I hope I, you learned something from this video I hope you like it and I hope uh, to see you again next week